Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. How are we all doing? Today's video is about essential winning kit which I use when I'm on my runs. Let's get started. Welcome back to Fair versus Triathlon. How are we all doing? We're all doing all right. Had a busy week, plenty of training in. Um, I've been, I've had a shocker this week, just had no motivation, but you know, just plodding on, plodding on. So like I said last week, I'm gonna put out a video about what um, training kit I use. So I'm not gonna talk about um, clothing as such, just all the other bits and pieces, and just little things that you may wanna think about. So number one is running shoes. So if, you get, if you're new to running, new to triathlon, there is a lot of choices of running shoes out there and everybody's promising this, promising that. Um, but the thing is, is with running shoes, it is massively personal. So whatever running shoes you go for is real specific to you. So I would thoroughly recommend, don't believe any of the hype online, go and go to your local running shop, tell them what sort of running you're wanting to do and take their advice. Um, personally, I, I use Hooker on the owners. Uh, these are the Clifton 7s, a little bit bit mucky from a bit of running recently. Um, but for me, they're great. They do the job and every generation just seems to get better and I really, really like them. So for running shoes, go to your local running shop, have a proper analysis and find some shoes that work for you. You may not find the, the right shoes straight away, but stick with it and you'll find some that just, just feel like a glove and they feel real comfortable and they really help. Right, so next, if we're going on from shoes, let's talk about socks. So other than standard socks, which, you know, we all have a couple of thing, couple of pairs of socks that I like to use, um, might be something worth thinking about. So number one, these are some socks that I got from Go Outdoors and a bit of advice um, from the guy in the shop. And these are really, really super thin, sort of like, um, in a sock that hikers use. So I, I suffer with blisters and basically the blister is when the sock uh, is rubbing against the shoe and it just causes um, the skin to flare up. So these are great because they're super thin and you can wear them underneath your standard socks and it provides two layers to rub against each other as opposed to the sock running against your feet. I think they're really good, they're pretty cheap and be, I'll be honest with you, They've solved a lot of problems. Secondly, um, they're a little bit mucky. Uh, seal skin, so these are fully waterproof socks. Um, I'll admit they do eventually give in if you're running in really, really wet conditions, but the the race, they're so good for um, if you're running in sort of boggy conditions. So you've probably seen my video during the week when I went running at Dolby Forest. It was really wet, really boggy, and my feet were pretty burnt dry till maybe just towards the end of the run when, when they sort of gave in. But then I use them for cycling as well, and they just keep your feet burnt dry because there's nothing worse than having wet feet and, you know, soggy feet. It's horrible. Uh, but I think they're really good. So seal skins. They're not cheapest things in the world, but they are definitely a worthy investment. So number three, ID. So I've got a road ID. Um, and if you're like me, I go running on my own quite a lot. So I'm going to go running, cycling on my own. And if I was in an accident, no one would know who I was. So no one would know how to contact. Um, sometimes if I go out for a short run, I don't even take my phone with me. Um, so this is little ID. It's got next to kin. Um, some details about me. Um, so if you've got obviously medical conditions, for example, you can put it all on that. If anybody, if you was to have an, unfortunately have an accident, they can see this on your wrists and it's got some vital information about it. And they're pretty cheap as well, they're really, really good. I'll put a link to their website down in the description. Um, so, number four, technology. So we all have this saying that with that, if it's not on Strava, it didn't happen. Well. To be honest with you, I don't record every run that I go on. Sometimes I just go running for the fun of it. But I think a decent running watch is it is is a really vital tool. So you may want to use it if you're doing intervals or um, if you're doing you know specific training sessions. And this can monitor your heart. It can really help with your training as long as as, long, as well as um tracking your distance, where you've been, etc, etc. Um, this is actually an old 920 XT that I got second hand and there's been a couple of generations since this, including 
the Garmin Fenix, which is meant to be amazing. But for me, it works, it does the job at the minute, and I don't see any, any reason to actually change it. I'm gonna do a video actually about all the tech and how relevant it still is, um, so that'll be coming up in the next few weeks. I think it's a great watch, does have everything that I need, and I think it's a really good training tool to use, but you don't need to obsess over the numbers. Um, so as much as anything, it's nice just to go for a run, don't take a watch with you and just do it for fun. Um, so, storage. So there's, um, I'm going to talk about nutrition in a minute, but there's, there's always this, um, this mindset that your body is capable of doing X without any nutrition or etc, etc. But the way I view it is everybody is different. So I could go out for a run and think that I'm, um, I've eaten enough and I haven't. And I go a week and wobbly and I end up having to walk after the run. So for me, I always take something to start snacks in so i've got two kinds of storage um for longer runs i've got a running rucksack so i can put a bladder in there um for my fluids snacks i can extra clothing phone etc etc the only thing advice i would say is don't buy a cheap one because i did a man doesn't have a chest strap so when i'm running it, it wobbles about i am gonna change this soon so i'll be buying a new ones i'll probably do a review on that if you're gonna buy one of these, look for one with a decent chest strap. Maybe look for one um, with uh, pockets on the straps because you can keep treats in there, etc. It saves you having to take it off every time you want to get something out of it. Other than that, if I'm doing a shorter run, it's, I've got this. It's like a little bum bag to be honest. Little storage pouch, enough for a couple of snacks, um, just in case I get caught out. Quite often, I don't need anything when I'm running um, if I'm doing a shorter run, but it's always worth just keeping something on me. So that's, that's my two storage options. And finally, um, like I said, food. Whatever one I go on, I always take some form of nutrition with me, just in case. Even, even if I'm going out for a 5K, I probably won't need it. It's very rare that I end up needing something because I can usually get through the session. Um, but I keep some of them, some uh, energy chew. They're a bit like an energy gel, but they're in um, a solid form and they're really good. I might take like, um, usually bar or something like that but if I'm doing a longer run then it's a bit more thought out so I'll actually decide how far I'm coming and going um, I don't know where I'm coming and going do I um, so I'll decide how far I'm going and then I'll actually put together sort of a nutrition plan to, to make sure I've definitely got enough food with me so I hope you found this video really useful if you did please don't forget to like and subscribe my videos um, I'll have another video coming in a week or so which will probably be something about a cycling kit I would have thought so enjoy your training and I'll see you soon. Give me that thing that you